Epson had a strong presence at the NAB Show 2017 in Las Vegas, showing off an AR headset. Despite the range of uses for the headset, they were using it to fly a DJI Mavic Pro drone. So you know we had to stop in to see it in action. We're in kind of two phases of this project with DJI. Step one is we've just taken the existing Android applications, so DJI Vision, Go, Go 4, all the different apps that are available, and we've put those on the device. So every time DJI launches a new build of one of these, we test it across the platforms, make sure it works with the Moverio, and then we launch it in our Moverio apps market. Think of our Moveria apps market as a tiny, tiny version of Google Play. A couple hundred apps. Now, phase two of our app, or of our kind of partnership with them is we're working on a custom app that's based on the DJI SDK and that'll really be optimized specifically for smart glasses. Because right now, I'm just getting, you can actually, here, I'll have you grab the glasses and try this on. Sure, that's what I'm looking for. You're, you're just getting the view the regular full phone tablet UI that you would see with the screen right in front of you, you know? And to be honest, that's too much information because that was designed for a screen. So they could put endless telemetry, settings, menus, it's the full thing. And what we want to do, and we selected a few agencies to work on right now, is build more of like a fighter pilot HUD where it's only the right amount of info, it's the relevant data, it's the things that you need always in front of you, but that won't be too distracting. So the people who are flying with it right now, we just ask them to provide us with all sorts of feedback. What do you always need in front of you to be successful? So phase two, a couple ideas, for example, would be we would mainly use a transparent screen and we could put waypoints in the sky so you could see where to fly it, what the flight path will be. Another thing that people have asked for, but we don't know how practical it is, is controlling the gimbal of the camera through head tracking. So moving your head around, you know. <laughs> we can also lock screens. So maybe we would have you lock one screen directly in front of you, and then some key flight path info or your photo gallery to the left or right of your head. Again, engage it with head tracking. There's a lot that can be done, and we're just scratching the surface and asking these two software agencies to figure it out, to really open up the possibilities using DJI's Android SDK. We are open to anything right now. Eric and I, the two uh, PM product managers for North America, we're both amateur pilots, to be honest. We just go out, we test, we try to see how the workflow makes the most sense. So we've partnered with a lot of DJI's, their head of education, their key evangelists, and we're saying, help us understand what makes sense to Tim and I, we might get a little too excited and put too many features in that might not make sense. So really we're trying to find what is that exact right amount. For the average user, you turn it on, boom, you've got the exact amount of data positioned in the right places so it's not distracting, so it's mainly transparent and you maintain visual line of sight with the aircraft. Then from there, let's build out advanced settings. People like you are more familiar, you've tried it, you know how to use different drones, we can give you an ability to kind of customize your either UI UX experience or just have way more additional settings like that head tracking mode that might be too complicated for most users. What we're working on is saying, how do we make it so it feels natural? How is it that you would say, okay, right now you don't really need FTV mode because you're three feet away from it. So maybe it's quick toggle or switch modes where, okay, initially I'm in transparent mode with only auto takeoff, battery, map, stuff like that. Then when I get a certain distance, I toggle on and switch into FPV mode. But it might only be thumbnail FPV because I just need a general understanding of where I am, where I'm looking. Then when I get to that spot where I'm lining up my shot with the horizon or the sunset, then I expand to full FPV mode I, I'm not as worried about positioning of the aircraft because I'm already in the spot when I want to be. I'm worried about my shot. So I need that full screen mode to see it. Those are some of the ideas, just being able to quickly switch from one to the other, 
to ensure that wherever you are, you're getting the like, contextually relevant right amount of data. And then one thing DJI and some of their key users have asked for, is they say, again, because people often lose positioning and can't figure out exactly where in the sky their aircraft is, just put a little arrow, like a little green augmented reality arrow. Really, we are just, again, scratching the surface to say, where do glasses help make it a better flying experience? Versus, there's probably plenty where people don't need it, admittedly. If you already have a whole team flying, and they say, we're good with our workstation, or we're not gonna try to force it until we know that it's 100% needed. So, one of the uh, things DJI really wants us to do is focus on keeping the user, the pilot's hands, on the aircraft at all times. And so, maybe that's using C1 and C2 on the back, the customizable buttons, but just saying, very rarely do we want the pilot to touch our track deck. It's a little more cumbersome. That part's actually the D-pad. If you put your thumb a little lower, you'll see a little white mouse cursor. That's how you would select right now the different settings, you know, go in and switch your ISO or, or do everything in the menus. Um, but they, they've built this elegant and very capable remote. So we're definitely trying to keep your hands always on the right there so you can pilot the aircraft. This renders, as you saw, when you're lo it's like projection. So the further away you look, the bigger the screen appears. It's roughly about a 100 inch screen if you're looking five meters away. Uh, the screen right now, the field of view size that a lot of people are familiar with um, is 23 degrees. So it's not like VR where you have yeah. 90, 100, 110. Yeah, exactly. um, so users who are, especially your you know, users who are familiar with VR based systems or the weight, AR, that's our biggest challenge, us, all the other products. Most people are in the 20 to 30, maybe 40 degree field of view at this point. Uh, but it's still, as you saw, a fairly large screen. It was, big enough, you I mean, know. It was there, and yeah. you could look at it and still see the drone. Yep. Know. And we actually, yeah. some pilots, this is our, the fact that it's not the biggest screen helps them a little because they still have a little more peripheral and environmental awareness, exactly. uh, which they've told us for certain flights is valuable. If you're in an environment where you really, you might be near you know, you don't want to trip on something, you're near a cliff. You don't want to be, yeah, exactly, you don't want to. Even this, you know, trying to keep yeah. the drone off the net. Exactly. Yeah. For me, you and I were doing the same thing. We are using the screen a little, but often just looking to the real world, trying to keep that thing in the right, you know, yes. reference area. So. so it'd be different than, obviously, in the real world, like yep. you say, when you actually just look at the screen yeah. and enjoy that flight. And I noticed that uh, there was really no latency. The good thing is this performs almost the same as a phone or tablet. You're right, I think DJI, I don't want to quote what they say, but it's pretty low. And the reason it's similar is, again, because this is just running DJI Go 4. So one thing that Epson is pretty unique is we do have, this is fairly large, this little controller. That's because of the battery. If you took this apart, mainly everything in there is a battery. It's uh, rated at up to six hours. Similar to a mobile device, if you're live streaming YouTube all day, you're gonna see that power drop. I found when I fly, uh, conservatively, I'd say at least about four hours. So you'd be hard pressed to have your drone outlast your glasses unless you brought 10 batteries or something, you know? Uh, so you can get quite a lot of battery life out of the device. So the glasses, think of them, the only, um, only things that are really in the headset are Epson. What's you, another thing unique about us is we're a projector company and very vertically integrated. So they built two custom little OLED projection panels to power our device, as opposed to many other companies, of course, source projectors from other companies to power display. Sure. So this has two projector panels up here, then an optic waveguide that redirects the image to those prisms in the middle. It also has that front-facing HD camera, it's five megapixel, just, I think it's uh, typically just shoot 1080p is the highest it can go. Makes sense. And then everything else up here is just sensors for head track. So just your standard kind of package with IMU compass accelerometer. The controller then, as you said, is the brain. That's where CPU is. That's where you've got uh, the battery. You have the input through the D-pad here, the three Android buttons, and then the trackpad, along with the ability to toggle between 2D and 3D mode. And then you also have sensors in here where you can actually independently control the sensors. So someone like if they're building a VR or AR type game, they could do head tracking through the headset, 
and then directional tracking through this maybe as like a wand or a lightsaber or a sword or something like that. Um, gotcha. So that's the main innards to the Moverio product. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to head over to our partners at VRSource.com for more in-depth coverage of VR technology. And stay tuned for more from the NAB Show and drones here at Charge.io. We'd love it if you subscribed and hit that bell icon to see what we have coming next. And hit that thumbs up if you like what you see here. Take care all. We'll see you next time.